Gina from Orchid and Opal Jewelry and Beads, and it is October the 30th already. My last finished jewelry update happened on October 16th, so it has been a couple of weeks, but I am so excited to get back on here and share with you some more projects, some more things that I've been up to over that time period. I get a lot of bead subscription boxes with a lot of beads and findings, and I just like to get on here and give you some inspiration and some ideas on some of the things that you might be able to do with those beads if you are subscribers of those boxes as well, or if you're just curious about beading and want some ideas and inspiration. So hopefully this helps you guys, and hopefully you have fun with this little show and tell. Um, the first piece that I'm showing you here right now is a jewelry set that I was inspired to come up with by these Vintage, V-I-N-T-A-J brand jewelry connectors. And they came in, I believe, the June bead crate. It was an Art Nouveau themed box. And I had them in my jewelry storage or finding storage binder that I've done a video on before. And every once in a while, I like to flip through that binder and sometimes pieces just kind of inspire me. So those connectors, I pulled them out and I was playing around on my bead board and trying to figure out what I should do with them. So I was playing around. I also had these little peacock finished beads, they're called, from the Bead Box Bargains website. And I just love those as well. And I don't know, something, it kind of came together and I was inspired to do these dangly earrings. I had noticed that these findings had five nice little holes. So I was kind of thinking at first, well, I could do a five strand necklace. I ended up doing a three strand necklace, which I'm happy about. And I was able to space them out with one hole in between. And then I decided since I had two more connectors that instead of using them in another necklace set or something else that I would try some dangly earrings. And I'm really happy with how they came out. I just did a basic wire wrapped loop type of deal on each of those and added some black 11 seed beads and some more peacock beads and kind of imitated the angle of this triangle here. And then to top it off, they had these little, you know, empty spaces here and there's a hole here. So I thought, well, since these are earrings, let me try to dangle something. I dangled a little, I believe that's a fire polish bead in the middle there that is jet black and it's got like a a blue iris type of a finish that I'm not sure if the camera really does it justice. I think it has a hard time with these peacock finish beads sometimes, but I think you get the idea. So they coordinated well. And then I used gunmetal colored findings or that shiny black type of finding to coordinate with those vintage connectors. And I also had this chain in my stash Something I like to do is take apart some of my old jewelry that I maybe have purchased a long time ago or uh, go to thrift stores and pick up old jewelry for, you know, cheap if I can find it and then take it apart and use the components. So I had this chain in my stash and I hadn't used it because I don't use a lot of that shiny black gunmetal, but I knew it would come in handy <laughs> for something, and so it, it definitely did. So this is the first set that I made that I wanted to show you guys and just wanted to talk a little bit about my inspiration and how I came up with this idea. And I also want to mention that if you see anything here today, I am in the process of getting these items listed on both my website and Etsy shop. So if you see anything here that's not listed, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you know, anything you see is for sale as long as I still have it. So don't be afraid to ask. You can reach out to me via the comments down below, or you can email me, you can Facebook message me, and I'll get back to you. I have all of my social media links and all of my links to get in touch with me and follow me down below in the information section. So don't forget, you can always look down there if you're looking for those. So I do want to mention too that um, you probably seen my ring that I'm wearing on my thumb. It is a new ring that I made and I was just playing around. Sometimes just doing some peyote stitch is kind of therapeutic for me. So I decided to one one day just, you know, make a new ring while I was kind of multitasking, watching something else. And I just wanted to give you guys a little tip 
Um, this is a design that I came up with, and this is kind of the behind the scenes, um, very crude drawing of <laughs> how I came up with this design. But I wanted to give you guys a tip in case you're interested. Now, this is a seed bead brick stitch um, graph paper. You can go on firemountaingems.com or you can like Google search or search their website for graph paper, and they have different types of bead stitching graph paper where you can graph out your own design. So one day I was just kind of doodling and that's what I came up with. So you can see how this kind of translates into this, even though I didn't do brick stitch, but the beads are set up the same way and I didn't use seed beads. I used Delicas, but you know, it still worked. That's what I had already printed out and that's what I used. So I just thought that might be a, a cool tip. If you haven't done peyote stitch, if you're interested, I, I wear a lot of like the modern striped rings. Well, I did a tutorial on that, so I'm going to link that above. And uh, if you don't see that, then you can also check out my uh, other videos for that tutorial if you're interested in learning how to do that because it's a pretty fun little stitch and rings are pretty quick and easy to make. So I just wanted to throw that out there if you're interested. So then we had gotten an awesome like carved leaf pendant in our last bargain bead box subscription. I mean, this subscription is awesome. I'm not affiliated with them at all. This is just me speaking about my honest opinions and I really liked it. I thought it was, I mean, the box is such a great value. You get so many things for $15.95. Yeah, they're not like high-end expensive items, but you do get some really nice items and it's $15.95 delivered to your door. Hello. So anyway, um, they had sent this awesome carved leaf pendant. I mean, just big, like hefty pendant, really nice. And it didn't have a bail on it, but you guys know I probably that I did a recent bbcraft.com haul. And one of the things that they sent me was a container of bales. And here's just an example of what you can do with that. So I took an antique brass color bale and I used some E6000 glue, which is a nice jewelry glue. I let it cure for 24 hours. I didn't touch it, but I glued the bale on instead of using the hole that was drilled here, um, just to give it that really nice finished look. And, you know, just in, if you're wondering what I did with the leaf pendant, this is just what I did. This is just one idea for you. Um, and I didn't want to clutter it up with much else personally. I mean, you can certainly do that, but I thought it looked really good on its own. I mean, this thing is like a piece of art. So what I did was I just added a bale to just give it another design element, kind of kick it up a notch. And I just added a basic antique bronze brass chain. And then Really, I didn't even need to add a class because the chain is so long, but I went ahead and added one of these clasps that I know came in another uh, bead subscription box, and it might have been another uh, bargain bead box subscription over the past few months. So I thought that just looked really nice with that. And then what I like to do, instead of just having a, a plain necklace like this, I mean, I think it's nice to have that option, I also created a coordinating necklace that could go along with it, and I used some tree agate beads and some African jade beads that I had in my stash. And so this is like a really nice long necklace. I could really see that with a, a false colored sweater. Um, I think it would look really pretty. But this one would kind of sit closer to the neck, and it's a little bit harder to show you because my camera is so close to my surface the way I have to... Um, film I can't show you like on a nice uh, tall type of jewelry form but I think you get the idea that this one would be you know closer to the neckline and then this piece would hang down and then I just use the same kind of chain on this necklace that I did with the leaf pendant so that they coordinated so you could really wear either one on their own or they would coordinate really well together, I think. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I don't think things have to be really complicated to be beautiful. I like a lot of really simple, elegant designs. I like things that are wearable, but um, that's just my style. And you guys have probably noticed that's what I do 
a lot, but that's what works for me. And I think it's great when we all kind of interpret things differently. And I'm sure there's so many other great applications that you guys have come up with with these carved leaves as well if you're subscribers and I'm sure they look great too. So those were really fun to play with and then um, just real quick I want to show you the finished results. Uh, I'm going to put my sorry about like the linty bead mat you guys <laughs> um, but I wanted to make it easy for you to see. I wanted to just pop on here and show you too the finished necklace that I made from the facet jewelry box video. If you haven't seen that yet, it's a couple videos back. Um, I did an honest review on the Facet Jewelry Box, just another type of jewelry making subscription box. I do think it makes a really good gift. It's great for new beaters. So it was a lot of fun to play with these. I had made these earrings actually in the video. So if you're curious about that, you can see those in the video in the process that I went through to make these. But you'll know if you saw the video that there were two uh, projects in that box. And you do get two projects in each of those boxes. And the other project was a necklace. And it worked out great. I was able to string that up. Um, I had more than enough materials. I had twice as many of these 15-0 Mayuki seed beads that I really needed. So that was cool. And then I had everything else I needed to finish this off. The clasp and the findings and whatnot even the jewelry wire, like everything was included. All you really needed was scissors and pliers. So just wanted to show you that in case you were interested in seeing what the finished product looked like. So next I wanna show you guys what I did with the round gray agate beads that I had showed you in a recent beadboxbargains.com haul. And that strand was a 15 inch strand of 12 millimeter round gray agate so you can um, you know tell by the 12 millimeter it was a little bit uh, larger rounds so you'll see those in just a second the strand was listed as 70 percent off and it was on sale for five dollars and 69 cents for a nice big strand and then I had a 30 percent off coupon if you're a subscriber they send you a coupon in each box typically and I had a 30 percent off coupon so the price is already great, and um, of course I went on there and made a purchase. So that brought the strand down to like $4 for this big old chunky strand of gray agate. And I'll be honest, when I first saw the agate, I thought it was a little bit like boring. And nothing was really jumping out at me <laughs> um, as far as what to do with it, which sounds kind of weird because it's like, okay, why did you buy the strand if like it seemed kind of boring. Um, but I know from my own experience that you can do some really cool things with basics like that. I mean, I had um, a great time playing with the agate and I wanna show you how I used it with three different tones of metal. So that was kind of uh, a cool thing that I did was I not only used it with silver colored or silver tone findings, but I used it with this gold as you can see here. I used it with uh, also antique brass. So I wanted to stretch myself. My first inclination was, okay, well, obviously you have to put that with silver. It's gray, you know, it's a cool tone. But if you can kind of see here, the agate has some brown properties to it as well. It's almost like if you guys heard of the the paint color like grayish, it's all the rage now. It's like, you know, it can kind of go cool, but it can kind of go warm. It's a great color. Um, I've painted my house inside that color. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is like a darker version of that. And it really can kind of go cool or dark. So anyway, this is what it looks like paired with the gold. I used some of the gold spacer beads here I've gotten in the past in a bargain bead box and on their website. And I have been hanging on to these gorgeous glass beads that were sent in a previous bead crate. And they might have even been the same Art Nouveau box as those vintage connectors you just saw. But I just absolutely love them. They're like dusted with this just light gold kind of dusting. And they're just beautiful, like turquoisey, greenish blue aqua color. And um, I've been waiting to use them, and I liked how they paired well with 
the gray agate and I, I like how they look with the gold because they had that kind of gold dusting. So I just went with that as the color scheme. And I really like how it came together. It looks really nice on. I did do a three strand on this necklace and here's the little earrings that match it. Um, it does look really nice on. It's got this little layer of chain when it's hanging on the neck. You can see like the second or middle layer is like a little layer of this chain that we had gotten in a uh, bargain bead box as well that I'd been hanging on to. So I, I'm really happy with how it came out. And I wasn't planning to use the gray agate with the gold, but I like how it all came together. So I'm really pleased with that. And so the next one I want to show you is the gray agate with antique brass. So again, wasn't my first thought to put this gray agate with antique brass. The antique brass has got, you know, the brownish kind of quality. And I thought it ended up looking kind of cool. So here's the antique brass. Um, this is an asymmetrical design. This is a uh, crystal that I had gotten from a Blueberry Cove subscription box. I'm no longer subscribed to them, but I had gotten a couple over the summer as a gift. And this was one of the beads that came in that. Um, this can be removed, so like you could wear it with or without the leaf, but I thought it gave it kind of a, a cool element. And then... Um, and over here, so you see freshwater pearls on this side, which I had also gotten at the same time as these gray agate. And um, used a lot of bead caps as well. And then the gray agate on this side. And then another little, like, connector to balance out the crystal on this side. And then just finished up the rest of the back with chain. And then the earrings, I used the same connector as is on that side, uh, along with a couple of the freshwater pearls dangling down and again you know just kind of an un unexpected um, thing for me like I wanted to just pair it with silver I thought that's what I should do but when you put it with the brown tones it picks up the brown tones it's kind of cool so this is just my second set I have one more set to show you from these gray agate beads that seemed kind of basic and boring. Um, and I've made three complete sets just from one strand. So it's kind of cool. I just like to kind of give you guys an idea of what you can do if you just play around and, and see what works. Um, here's the set I did first with the silver toned findings. And I used these little connectors we had gotten from the September bargain bead box subscription and paired it with some silver chain on the back. Um, again, I have paired the gray agate beads with freshwater pearl beads that I had gotten at the same time. And I used the little filigree connectors as well to make some earrings. So let me try to get you guys a little closer so you can see. You also see I used some of those same little peacock beads that I had used in that vintage set that I had showed you before and voila I like the way this all looks together so you really can use the smoky agate with different finishes of findings it's just all in how you you pair it all in what you put it with and you just have to pull beads out of your stash and see what works I mean I didn't come up with this stuff um, just completely off the cuff like there was plenty of stuff that I had tried to put together that just didn't look right to me so I had to put those things back and pull out different things and eventually I found things that I really like so it is a process it's not something that you're just gonna automatically pick up, up beads and it's gonna work it doesn't work like that um, you just have to do a lot of experimenting and, and playing around so that was my third set with this the gray agate and last but not least uh, I did some bead weaving I had gotten some of those beautiful two hole crescent beads from the adornable elements beads of the month club rotating beads of the month club subscription that I featured on my channel before they had 
sent two whole beads this month, which I was really excited about. They sent some amazing like brass, bronze, antique bronze, and this like really cool, it's called drizzled honey colored beads and then bright red. I was really excited about the combination of colors that they sent. Not even that I need to use them together, but I just, I liked them all for different reasons. Well, what's great about the Adornable Elements subscription, particularly for me, is I've been beading for years and years, but, um, you know, it wasn't with, like, these strange-to-me shapes or new-to-me shapes. Like, there's so many shapes of beads out there now, you guys. It's ridiculous. And I, I'll be honest, I kind of resisted it at first. I'm like, you know, this is just a way for me to spend more money on these funky shapes, and what am I going to need these for? But, you know, as I'm getting more and more of these beads in subscription boxes and just different shapes, like a little bit at a time, I've been having a lot of fun playing with them. So these right here are those crescent shaped beads. And I used literally all but one bead that they sent me. And they sent me a lot. I made three necklaces out of these beads, you guys. And you'll see that in just a second. Um, so you can tell I, I had fun. So I saw an image that kind of was similar to this on Pinterest, but it wasn't this at all. Like this was what I came up with when I was playing around with the beads. I knew I wanted to use them with beads that other people would probably have if they were like subscribers of boxes. And we all, if we're subscribed to the dollar bead box, have a lot of these fire polish beads. And you guys, these are those new beads that they've been sending, the crystal beads with the lined centers check that out. Those are the gold line crystal fire polish beads in the three millimeter and the four millimeter. Aren't those just so pretty? So I had those in my stash. I couldn't wait to use them. And I love how like combined in, in this way with these crescent beads, it looks almost like chain or something running through there. Like it is so beautiful. I love those beads. They have all different color lining of those particular types of beads. And then I just combine them with gold finished seed beads, 11 seed beads. But you can see where if you kind of do the shapes, like where you use three millimeter up here and four millimeter down here, it gives you this awesome shape for a necklace. And you guys know, I just, I don't know, this is my style or something. I like to do something really cool and unique at the front. And then I like to finish it with chain. Um, I just, that's, I guess, my style. But, um, I mean, you could do the whole necklace using this and it'd be gorgeous. Um, but yeah, I, I just love how it came out. And so I decided, well, if it worked this well with the fire polish beads, let me go ahead and try it with some other shapes that I have. So I've been hanging on to these pip beads, P-I-P, pip beads, for the longest time. I thought they were beautiful, but honestly, like, unless I would, was to use them in, like, creating a floral design, I didn't really have any specific ideas for them. So I was looking around at my beads and not only did this pink color just like look absolutely gorgeous with the drizzled honey, like, cause you can see they, they have that similar finish on them. Like look how well the colors go together. So that was kind of by chance, but you know, it, was, it worked out great. Um, but the shape was perfect. Like they fit right in that same little section. And so I just, you know, kind of went with it and I love how that turned out. So these are just the little check glass pit beads. And these came from the dollar bead box. They had either come in a past subscription box or I purchased them separately on their website. And then again, you can see that I used some of those same three millimeter crystal gold lined fire polish beads on the top and they just look stunning if I do say so myself. So I absolutely love that. In fact, I am so inspired by these crescent, crescent shaped beads that I actually went out, not went out, I went online and purchased them in other colors. So you'll see a bead haul coming up where I have actually gone to buy more beads because I've used all the crescents that I have and I absolutely love how this looks and I may do a tutorial on it. Um, I know I like to do like basic tutorials where it's like beads that everybody typically has or that you know most people who are interested in beading would have and I know these are a unique shape but 
it's not like they're paired with like five other weird shapes like I see a lot of tutorials which is fine that's great but it's just not something that like beginners would automatically have but if you're like a subscriber maybe to the Adornable Elements subscription box or maybe you have these shape in your stash and you just haven't used them um, they just pair really well with some other basics to create this collared look so these were um, I decided to try pairing them with super duos so there's two green super duos and a seed bead in between those in each of these sections and then I used a three millimeter like pretty emerald green fire polish bead in each of these sections so this was like three necklaces that were inspired from one design and I think they all look really cool in their own way like the possibilities are endless and um, I was even thinking like with this one I had a Chet glass like clear drop bead and I didn't think of it when I was making this until after I had made it that it would have kind of looked cool just right there like you could put a pendant on this like that would look really neat I mean I think there's a lot of possibilities with this design so I'm totally uh, a convert on these crescent shapes and <laughs> two whole crescents and I'm so glad that Adornable Elements sent those and that's just another reason why I love the subscription boxes I get comments sometimes like oh you know I can't justify the cost which I get like yes you could go out a lot of times and buy different beads separately especially with discounts and coupon codes for cheaper yeah that may be the case um, but to me like there's another reason that is pretty important and that's because they send things that I wouldn't normally ever think to buy and I never would have come up with something like this that I now really love and it was actually a lot of fun to make so Anyway, you guys, I think I've done enough rambling on. I hope this finished jewelry update was enjoyable for you. And I hope it gave you some ideas and inspiration. If nothing else, you just maybe enjoy seeing what I'm up to. Um, I just want to say, too, that if you hadn't seen my last video, bbcraft.com is sponsoring an awesome giveaway where they are actually giving away a product to three of my subscribers so three of you which is really cool will win any product of your choice that you link in the comment of that video so if you haven't entered that please go ahead um, and at least try you can't win if you don't enter and you know I, I'm gonna be having lots more giveaways on my channel I love doing that because I love giving back to you guys and it's a lot of fun I like to see the generosity of companies like BB Craft too, and when they offer that, I'm definitely going to take advantage of it for you guys because, I mean, what what a fun thing to do. So if you haven't entered that, check that video out and enter, and it's good for any item. Like, it can be from the U.S. warehouse, it can be from the China warehouse, um, no price limit. They just don't want any, like, really bulky, like, storage items or, like, jewelry displays, but anything else, like literally you can just link it in the comment and that's your entry. So go forth and do that. And I just want to thank you guys so much once again for being with me. You guys are what keeps me going and keeps me inspired to keep creating and sharing um, seriously. So I'm, I'm grateful for you guys for watching, for being here, for commenting, all of you who are subscribers, all of you new subscribers and people who have been with me from the beginning and everyone in between. Thank you so much, and feel free to leave me a comment below. Let me know what your favorite items were here that you saw today, or maybe what you've been up to, what you've created from these similar items, or feel free to leave me a question. Anything you like, I do respond. So I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day, and hope to see you soon on my next video. Bye, guys. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love you to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you'd like to see more of my videos and check out the video description section to follow along on all of my social media handles, visit my Etsy shop, and check out my new website and blog at orchidandopal.com. Thanks for watching!